Hey YouTube. So in this video, you're going to learn about what we look for in a diagnosis phase and some of the early observations and how we're capturing that information to inform later decisions. This phase is really important and I think you're going to get a lot out of this video if you're just starting to diagnose your own property as well. Hey guys, it's Rob and <laughs> and today we're going to be doing a fireside chat. Uh, it's Christmas, so we've been out for a few days and um, today I want to talk about diagnosis, even though we haven't really started to get into the diagnosis phase of our design process, but um, even though we described the five-step process, clarify your values and vision, diagnose your property for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats design your property of your dreams, implement, and then monitor and manage for success. Even though we haven't even got past clarify yet, um, I thought today would be a good time to talk a little bit about the diagnosis process because it doesn't always happen in a linear phase. So it's minus 15 outside, it's really cold. It's not as cold as it will get though, it'll actually get colder than that. Minus 15, that's gotta be what, four degrees Fahrenheit? Zero maybe, Zero. I don't know, we have yeah. to look it up. Um, somebody can look it up and put it in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Or you can just Google it. Um, for the folks that are from the States, uh, we live in a place where Fahrenheit and Celsius are friends, meaning that it gets to minus 40 here, not all the time, but it will get really cold. And so we're not even at the coldest part of the year or as cold as it can possibly get. And we are freezing cold in this house in spite of the fact that we've got this monster behind us this 80,000 BTU wood stove, um, it'll keep up to it, but only because we've got an 80,000 BTU furnace. So we've got 160,000 BTUs worth of heat in this house and it's it's freezing. And so... It's not freezing, literally. It does feel cold though. The pipes aren't freezing. Well, it's there's two type, like there's two types of freezing. <laughs> there's freezing when your wife can't stay warm and she's walking around with a house coat all the time and then there are is pipe freezing and so those were the exact words you used this morning. I did say it's freezing cold but it's just for our YouTube viewers I wanted to like give some context. Yeah okay. It's well, not, I am not a, icicles. I am in a t-shirt. And... <laughs> Anyhow uh, and so the reason I wanted to talk about this is because um, you're always diagnosing. You're always looking for things and so even though I haven't quantified exactly uh, the exact amount of energy that this house is using, which is kind of a bit of a lie, I kind of know how much it's using, but um, it's a ridiculous amount. I think the owner said it uses about 4,700 liters of propane a year and about six cords of wood, just to kind of give you an idea uh, in terms of keeping this place warm. So uh, I do have a kind of a sense of how much it uses, um, which gives me a target with regards to how I'm going to insulate it and what I actually want to achieve as a result of the performance upgrades. Um, but as we're walking around the house, we're using um, our sensor, largest sensory organ, which is our skin, to kind of figure out where the cold spots are um, so that we can kind of understand why the house is getting cold. Now, one of the cool things about my job at the Green Building Technologies Lab at SAIT, Southern Alberta Institute of Technologies, is that I got access to all sorts of really kick-ass tools. So I'm going to post a couple photos in this video at some point. Uh, this is a, a thermic camera, so it'll actually take infrared pictures and um, you've got a nice little um, screen in the back there. In fact, I can turn it on and show you kind of how warm we feel. Um, and uh, this allows you to figure out kind of where the weak spots are in the house. And so typically what you do when you're using a camera like this is we set up a blower air door test. And by the way, we're gonna do a whole series on this um, in some time over the holidays. Um, it'll come out a bit later, but you put in a blower air door and you suck the air out of the house. So you create a negative pressure. Um, hopefully when it's minus 15, minus 20 outside, you want about a 40 degree temperature swing between outside and inside. And then as that cold minus 15 air comes through all the different cracks and crevices, you can go around with this little tool and you can um, really pinpoint where the cold air is coming in. And so just as a rule of thumb, 25% of your heat loss typically happens through air infiltration. I think it's probably closer to 40 or 50% in this house, it's just my gut. 25% uh, from the windows, 
I think another 30% in our case is coming from our windows because we have really poor windows. Uh, and then 25% from the envelope and uh, specifically the walls and then 25% from the roof. And so that gives you your 100% um, of heat loss. So I think our number one heat loss is air infiltration, our number two heat loss is windows, uh, our number three heat loss is walls, and then our number four heat loss is a roof. And so we're going to actually have to go through all of that stuff. We're going to do a set of drawings and do the building science on it, show you guys you know, what we're thinking and why we're going to do it. And we'll get some other experts involved as well, where we're going to interview Chris Magwood on the channel and um, go through that step by step so you can, guys can kind of see why we're making specific decisions and how we're quoting it and, and figuring out what it's going to cost and all that stuff. So here's um, this camera and it'll just give you a sense of kind of what Michelle looks like. So you can see that she's really hot <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then the window behind us and uh, it really just picks up on on the, the heat of different surfaces and so um, we'll go around the house and take photos of all the different walls and roofs and floors and really get a sense of uh, where our biggest heat loss is going to be which will give us a sense of where we're going to get the most bang for buck in terms of, of uh, our project. So one of the things that people kind of get caught up in, do, do you want to add anything to that? You're just kind of sitting there quiet. <laughs> well, back to this idea of diagnosis, we've been um, here for about a month now and just noticing, noticing things because it's the solstice or we just had the solstice. One thing that um, was a really great opportunity to observe was the sun path at the lowest uh, point of the year, the shortest day of the year. And we weren't really sure, this is south of this way, there are some obstructions in the yard. There's a, there's a large garage and there's some pretty big trees. So, you know, back in September and November when we were first um, put an offer on the property, we really didn't know how much solar gain we might get through these south facing windows based on those obstructions. But the good news is um, the sun actually just peaks right over the top of the garage and so this quite surprisingly or what we're really happy about is we're, we're actually getting quite a bit solar gain even in the winter yeah and actually what's really interesting mm -hmm. about that is as we're ideating different ways that we want to develop the property one of the concepts that i'd come up with early on was changing the roof on top of the shop to a gambrel roof and uh, as per michelle's comment there i can tell right now that if i put a taller roof on there i would eliminate the solar gain on the shortest day of the year and so even though we're not officially into the diagnosis phase in this video series, um, you can't really do it in a linear fashion. So you've got to be making notes and taking pictures. Um, and so the next logical question that you're going to have is like, well, where do I capture all that information? And so we have a perfect solution for you. Um, Dakota Cohen, who's a business partner of ours, came up with this idea of using a graphical information system to capture that data. And so we actually use Google Earth Pro. And so we've built our own process inside of that software. So Google Earth Pro is free and the process we've created is free. And it's the same process that we use when we're consulting for other people as well as helping our students to come up with that diagnosis process. So we're gonna leave a link to how you can get that tool down below. And um, in future videos we're going to show you a little bit about how to use it so make sure you're staying subscribed to the channel because we're going to go through the whole five-step process and all the different intricacies within each of those five steps so i wanted to just talk a little bit about kind of some of our early um, observations um, this one just really stood out because this morning michelle walked out in uh, multiple layers of clothing plus a House, house coat, coat on top of my multiple and layers. And was, was shivering. <laughs> so uh, even though we've got this giant, you know, fire pumping out heat behind us, um, it it doesn't compensate for the coldness that you feel all over the house because of it, its draftiness and the lack of insulation and all that stuff. And I guess what I'll close with is that a lot of people focus on putting in bigger heating appliances or more efficient heating appliances. The efficient part is good but the reality is you're not actually dealing with the root cause of the problem so in this house the root cause of the issue is we don't have enough southern glazing we have the wrong type of windows they're poor windows um, 
we don't have enough insulation in the walls, and there's an enormous amount of air leakage. So we've got to get to deal with all of those things, and we're just in the early stages of planning out what that is going to look like, and we'll go through all of that in, in our video series. Nothing from me. Okay. All right. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, make sure you stay tuned, and like I said, we're going to go through this whole process from start to finish. So if you're doing your homework, you're probably going to get a lot of value out of these videos. See you guys soon.